So today we are all about video games. Our guest has been on different sides of the voiceover business for more than 20 years as an audio recording engineer, editor, casting director, and now he is known as one of the best video game directors around. His company, Tiki Man Productions, has produced voiceover for massive hits like Gears of War 1, 2, and 3, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, Mass Effect 1 and 2, Need for Speed, and so many others. We are so super excited to have these super cool Chris Borders. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you, guys. Chris Borders, Thank welcome you. to VO Buzz Weekly, Thank my friend. You, you are so freaking awesome. To come. Does this guy look like a rock star or what? Well, right? you know. He is. That's why. I'm, I'm reliving it, you know. Midlife crisis, <laughs> what can I say, you know? <laughs> Can I have everyone's autograph? I know, but isn't midlife crisis awesome, though? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's like, isn't, isn't like, what, like 40 is now to be like the 20s again yeah. or something like well, that? It's, it's agreeing with you, your yeah, crisis. I'm trying, I'm trying, people, some you know. people look at it as like a bad yeah, thing, and it's like, yeah. I think it's an awesome thing, I know, man. well, you know, you people know? Said, said, yeah, started growing my hair out again, and they started saying to me, you know, yeah, so you putting the band back together, you know? And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't yeah, know, maybe, not? you know? I'm, I'm talking to Chuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about the audition process. Are there things that voice actors do during the audition process that work against them, things that really are not a good idea? If you could give some wisdom on that. You know, one of the things that you'll find kind of across the board is that some of these auditions that get sent out to these agencies mm -hmm. um, that the actors have to read on have these, you know, and, and, and I have to kind of work at them a lot of times when they're my clients. Um, but video game companies tend to sort of forget the reality that an actor, a ton of actors are coming in to read for these parts. Mm -hmm. And they put these huge bios together, you know. His aunt's uncle's brother's friend was a really angry guy who slept with this, no, no. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so, you know, a lot of backstory that yeah. probably the actor's just gonna go and not really care about. Mm -hmm. So I try and break all that down, you know, to, you know, accent, age, demeanor, personality, you know, things that are, uh, that an actor's gonna very quickly be able to ascertain very quickly and then find out. Mm -hmm. Um, some actors, you know, will read something, and of course I put in there, let's say something, it's a very serious dr dramatic video game, like a war game, where I'm trying to, and I'll a lot of times put an archetype of a character or an archetype of a film right. mm -hmm. that people have seen, um, like Black Hawk Down, let's say for a war title, and I say, you know, this is like, very similar to like Black Hawk Down, um, Apocalypse Now kind of acting. Right. And so hopefully those actors may have seen those films, and, and, and or maybe they go out and they, you know, YouTube or you know, research. Yeah, a little research, research exactly, absolutely. and they see that that kind of dialogue and whatnot. So that's really helpful for actors to do that because it, you know, once they get an, an idea of what we're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. then they have a they have an insight. You know, mm -hmm. right. inevitably, there's a lot of actors out there that maybe this because they do a lot of commercial copy or they do a lot of cartoons, they just kind of miss the mark, you know, because mm. it's just not their, not their thing, you know, yeah. but they still try, you know, and I, I give everybody, you know, I listen to everybody, I give everybody credit to, to try and whatnot, but the guys who are gonna get these gigs are the ones who know how to go into the acting style, who know how to pull it back, who know how to go flat when they need to go flat, who know right. how to bring up the drama when they need to bring up the drama, mm -hmm. you know, who, who know how to nuance things. It's kind of like going on to a TV show, you know, yeah. or, or like, like if you're doing like one of those CS CSI or you're doing, uh, you know, NCIS or one of these mm -hmm. cop show dramas, you know, a yeah. lot of these games are like that nowadays, exactly. you know, it's sci-fi dramas and whatnot. We, you know, most of these developers are typically utilizing, you know, popular culture films and television shows as their archetypes for these right. games. Yeah. And so it's a lot to work with, but it, it pays a tremendous amount to really, really do your research, especially mm -hmm. if you're an actor. If you want these gigs, you know, you really got to do your research, you know. Yeah. And there are, of course, a lot of actors out there, you know, and they're just, they, they get it. They've, they've yeah. done a lot of games, they do their research, and they understand it, and, they're, and they're, they get a lot of the gigs, you know, yeah. because they just immediately go in there and boom, they nail it, and then, you know, and they also, their skills are amazing. Mm -hmm. I always tell people when they're getting into voice acting, or when they're deciding, you know, I, say, I do a lot of funny voices, you know, and I, I think I'm good at it. A lot of friends have said good things about my voices, and I always, you know, get these emails and whatnot. And I try and, you know, give everybody an opportunity to at least give them a rundown as to what it's about, what it's like, you know, and, and it could be time consuming, but I always want to do it because I feel like, you know, if I were, I remember when I was that kid, yeah, you yes. know, and I said I wanted to be a musician and, you know, and no one gave me the time of day. So I, I want to give them that time, you know, and, uh, and one of the first things I say to them is I say, you know, 
to tell if you really want to be a voice actor, go get like War and Peace and start on page one and just start reading and read it out loud. Mm -hmm. And every time you fumble or stop or like, screw up or say a word wrong, start, go back, start at the next period that you screwed up and start again. And keep on doing that for a while. Read through about 25 pages. Mm -hmm. You will hate voice acting if you hate doing that. Right. You will love voice acting if you love doing it. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, regardless of whether all the funny voices we can do and all the shtick at the parties yeah. and you know the fun yeah. stuff, it really comes down. You've got to be a good reader. You've yeah. got to be able to read. You've got to be able to, to pick up on the nuances of, of copy. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand character development. And then I tell people, I say, it really comes down to acting. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know, I know a lot of these guys come from different angles. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of them come from comedy. Some of these guys come from just, you know, like an amazing actor, Steve Bloom. Yeah. Amazing voice right. actor, amazing voice. Steve, no back acting background. You know, he kind of fell into it, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of like way acting is. You know, yeah. you have some of these people who are just amazing actors who just kind of f have it in them. Yeah. It's a rare thing, but it does happen. It is. But it's not for everybody. Yeah. Training, I can't, you know, I mean, we always say, you know, if you can get the training in it, you're all the better, you know. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. if you have that talent. All you, the more training you get in this business, the more you're going to get, you know, to Abs learn and get better at it. Yeah. And and meeting people, you know, yeah. go go to these seminars, go to these things, you know. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, field it out, you know, learn which one which ones to go to. But you know, classes, you know, there's so many great classes, and there's mm -hmm. so many great people that are superstars of voiceover mm -hmm. teaching in LA right now mm -hmm. and some travel around all over the country right. Pat Fraley for instance you know yeah. I've worked with Pat for years and you know and he has this thing and he does it and he goes around and he trains all these people yeah. some and of I them are for available him. through Skype mm -hmm. exactly so if exactly. you live in a place that you know they're not available to you you can always reach out to them and they will teach you yeah, yeah. and some of it's free you know yeah. I mean so like people mm -hmm. like the, like this <laughs> <laughs> I mean you know we're you know a world of information this is like all your right here you're not going to get anywhere yeah, else. Exactly, Everyone exactly. can afford free. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and so when you're so and when you're listening back to these auditions, uh, are most of these characters in in video games? Are they more say animated charactery type things or are they more real type characters? It depends on the title, you know. I mean, like I say a lot of these war titles um, you know, some are like as serious as like say a, a, a movie like Black Hawk Down, you know. Yeah. I remember they had a lot of stars in it, and a lot of them were kind of in their beginning, you know, yeah. like Ewan McGregor and whatnot, starting yeah. off. Um, you know, where they where they want that real. It's like a simulator, like Call of Duty, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, very popular game, very successful franchise. Yep. You know, I think it's actually probably the most successful entertainment franchise in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a has a very natural feel of what it's like to be in a mock battle, and I think that you know some people really like that. They want that experience, that yeah. realism. Um, and then you have games like Gears of War, which is kind of like a comic book mm -hmm. version of that. It's like you know, it's a little over the top, has a little bit of a slight edge. It's in a different world, it's in a different place. So the mm -hmm. characters have a little bit more broad, bigger sense yeah. to them, you know. Um, and and then you have other titles like you know that are a little more for the younger audience, you know, yeah. for the kids, mm -hmm. where we play them really up. We have fun with them. We really exactly. get into it. Um, but like I say, it all really depends on the on the type of title and what the publisher and the developer are really trying to achieve with the title. I get it. Um, so again, there's a different genre for everybody, yeah. you know, and there's so many different things out there, Absolutely. you know, and, which is great. I mean, it's, yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's like films, really you know, it's yeah. amazing. I know. So and, much great and, stuff. And, yeah. and we're going to talk about where it's all going. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's going to be crazy. But uh, uh, another question is, um, is it is it, should somebody slate in their character or just their own voice? Um, Thank <laughs> you.